Hey everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Remy LaBeouf, Grammy-nominated composer and saxophonist, co-leader of the LaBeouf Brothers Ensemble, and founder and director of the Assembly of Shadows Jazz Orchestra. Remy is here to give us a glimpse into his creative process. Hey everybody. So yes, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my creative process. I'll just start off by saying um, it all begins with listening and you are what you eat. All the music that you assimilate, that's kind of what you use as fodder for your ideas. So um, I encourage people to really take their listening uh, seriously when it comes to their creativity. And it doesn't have to be in a really intentional way, it can be really passive. Uh, but for example, I'm gonna be using devices today that you know are common in Radiohead tunes or Ariana Grande songs or you know, just like anything, you know, so it's, it's, I like to have a varied diet. So I'll talk by just, I'll begin by talking about just melody and chords. So oftentimes when I sit at the piano to start composing a song, I'll, um, I'll just mess around with melody and chords and try to make them fit with each other. Um, some of my students ask like, what do you start with? Um, you can start with a melody and add chords to it. You can start with chords and add a melody to it. Uh, but uh, it's important that they match. So uh, oftentimes, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll have as an exercise, a st students uh, begin with uh, a melody. And then each note, say you have a D, you know, any number of chords can sound good under that D, a G major seven, or a B flat major seven, or a B minor 11, you know. Uh, you know, so, you've got a lot of options. And so it's just really about exploring all those options and seeing how they fit together and creating a mood. So uh, I'm gonna begin by just showing you one of my pieces. This is called Mirrors in Your Eyes. And you can see what I do with melody and chords. first started writing this song, I was inspired after seeing uh, uh, a show in Los Angeles where I was living at the time. Uh, and I, I wanted to experiment with this idea of one note staying the same throughout. So if you look at the lead sheet, you'll see that first chord is a B flat major seven, or sorry, rather a B flat triad. And that middle note, that F stays the same throughout the whole A section. So, you know, I messed with melody and chords, but here sometimes when, you, when you've written enough melody chord things, you want to open things up. You want to try experimenting with vamps and hits and different concepts. And so this was a concept, the idea of one note staying the same. Um, so a, a good example of that is One Last Time by Ariana Grande, you know? So, uh, but here in, in a jazz context, you know, we have the F staying the same from the B flat triad. So basically the bass note and the melody change, but the F is staying the same. Now it goes to minor. some movement, you know, but this is how the song was born. Now it goes down to that G flat major seven. Still have the F there, E major triad from the add nine. F is still there. So throughout this section, even in the second ending, you know, um, it, it stays there. And then when we get to the bridge, I kept the same idea, but this time the A is the thing that stays the same. So we've got... Let's listen a little bit more and you can hear how this device works and you can hear the bridge as well.
So at this point in the, the compositional process where I have the A section and maybe this B section, let's say, um, I, I come to an important part where I start to ask, where does it want to go from here? And maybe not always at this point in the process, but every point of the process, I, I might be asking myself, where, where does it want to go? Um, what does the composition want? What do my ears as a listener want? Um, oftentimes, if I've established too much of the same thing, then I want some variety. So I might juxtapose what I have next to a different mood. So I wanted a lot of like variety here. And, um, and I, I wanted this, this big uh, moving pattern, this, uh, what is it? <laughs> You know, that can be kind of like a break and then the band just, you know, they can kind of like crash down on those. On this recording, it kind of like vibes out and it's a very peaceful thing. But um, I was kind of thinking, what what can I do to contrast where we were coming from? And that, that was the solution, you know, and then I kind of had this kind of, this really washed out figure up here. And then, you know, kind of move the bass around, you know, throughout. And it, it's a really fun thing to improvise over as well. And I thought that that was uh, kind of a, a nice place for it to go, a nice way to build it and also break it down rather than just having another A, A, B, A tune. So, uh, so those are some of the things I do. I think about melody and chords. I think about certain concepts, vamps, hits. What can I, there are no hits in this song until the C section and we got big hits, you know? Um, and then where, what's the big picture? Um, what's the structure? Where does the piece want to go from here? So um, that's just a window into my process. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full-length events and participate in live Q&As with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.